Right, hey guys, today we're going to be learning about absolute value equations. And a couple things first is let me uh, talk about what a solution set is and what an empty set is. And then we'll talk about um, what absolute values and absolute value equations are. First off, a solution set is a set of all solutions to an equation. Now, you guys are used to having some, and I'll just give like the simplest of examples, x plus 3 equals 5. Well, the solution is is the value of x that would make the equation true. Okay? And in this case we all know that x equals 2. And it can it can be written like this. See these brackets? This is just saying the solution is 2. However, if we have more than one solution, for example, an equation like this, what value of x will make this equation true? Well actually there's two now. Both 3 and negative 3 will both make this equation true. So this is a solution set, and we um, identify it with this bracket here, these brackets, and this is just a list of all the possibilities of x that will make it true. Order does not matter. This is not an ordered pair. I could just as easily do this, and that would be considered a solution set. Okay, what an empty set is. An empty set is a set where there's no solution, where there's nothing in it. There is no value for the variable that would make it true. So when there is no solution to equation or no value for the variable that would make it true, we call it an empty set. So here's an example of an equation that would have an empty set. X times 0 equals 5. There is absolutely positively no value for X that I could possibly plug in here that can make this true none. And so we write an empty set as this little thing here. It's like a circle with a line through it. That means empty set. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. All right. Absolute value. Now, um, I'm sure that you guys have uh, learned about absolute value before, but let's just make sure that we're all uh, talking the same language here. Um, technically speaking, the absolute value is the distance from zero on the number line. So the absolute value of a number is the distance from zero on the number line. So when we say something like this, what does the absolute value of negative 8 mean? Well, we just need a number line and to know that where's negative 8 on a number line? It's right over here. So we're saying how far is that away from zero? It's 8 units away. Now the thing is, it's just a distance and a distance is always positive. Since the distance is always positive, so is the absolute value of a number. The absolute value is always positive. Okay. Alright, so now let's take a look at an absolute value equation. So here's an absolute value equation. It's saying the absolute value of some number equals 3. Well, what exactly does that mean? Well, um, what value of x can make this equation true? Well. Uh, we're saying what value of x is exactly three units away from zero on the number line? Well, there's two possibilities, both negative three and positive three. So in solving for this equation, we have to account for both of those possibilities, a negative three and a positive three. So in this case, we have a solution set of three and negative three. And we would write it like this. So that's the basic idea of uh, an absolute value equ equation. We want to know what values of x can make the equation true. Okay? Okay, our first example here is what is the absolute value of x minus 3 that will equal 2? So essentially what we're looking for is some value, this expression represents some value that's going to be two units away from zero. So no matter what it is, I know that the absolute value of a positive two is two, and the absolute value of a negative two is two. So essentially what I have is two simple equations. I just need to set um, each one of these expressions equal to either negative two or positive two. Because I want to know what value of x will make the expression two units away. So I have x minus 3 equals negative 2, and x minus 3 equals a positive 2. 
So what value of x would make that true? Well, I add 3 to both sides here, and I have one solution of x equals 1. But then, what would make it two units away, or uh, exactly two away? Add 3 to both sides, x equals 5. So I have a solution set of 1 and 5. And we could just plug it back in here, and either of those would work. Okay. So why don't you guys give, give this one a try. Okay. So again, we're going to look for an expression here, a value of x that will make this expression 9 units away from 0. So I know that the expression itself has to be either a positive 9 or a negative 9 for that to be true. So I have to set the expression equal to both negative 9 and positive 9. 3x minus 3 equals negative 9 and 3x minus 3 equals positive 9. So now I'm just going to solve these two uh, mini equations. So on this one I'll add, I'll add 3 to both sides. Divide by 3. One solution is negative 2. We'll do this little mini equation, add 3 to both sides and divide by 3. One solution is 4. So my solution set is negative 2 and 4 and you can always check that by just plugging it in and seeing that these two are our only solutions. Okay, I'll go ahead and give this one a shot. Okay, uh, again, what we're looking at here is the absolute value of some expression is 67 units away from zero. So I know that whatever is in here has to be 67, or it could be equal to negative 67. Those are our two choices or are two possibilities, I should say. 4x plus 3 equals 67, or 4x plus 3 equals a negative 67. Okay, uh, on the left here, I'll go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides, divide by 4. So um, when x is 16, uh, this is exactly, the expression is exactly 67 units away from 0. Um, on the right here, subtract 3, divide by 4, and when I simplify that, let me just make sure that we're all together here, this simplifies to a negative 35 over 2. We always want to express our, uh, even our improper fractions as simplified fractions. So our two solutions are 16 and negative 35 over 2. Alright, uh, number 4. Why don't you give that one a shot? Okay, now, oops, let me back that up, I'm sorry. Um, one of the things that you'll be tempted to do is to distribute. Now, here's the thing. Um, I'm going to tell you, don't do that. Not because it won't work in this particular case, because it actually will. The case that I'm worried about is the case where it doesn't work. And the thing is, I don't want you to have to memorize when it does or when it doesn't work, so just take this as an over, kind of overarching principle. We want to solve absolute value equations by getting the absolute value expression alone. So for me to get this alone, I'm going to divide everything by 4. That's These two will then simplify to 1. That's all good. And this will simplify to 6. So when I divide everything by 4, again, those cancel. This simplifies to 6. And now I'm here. Now I have my absolute value expression alone, and we can apply our technique from the previous problems. Set the expression equal to negative 6 and positive 6. Again, that's the expression inside the absolute values. And solve. And our two solutions are negative 8 and a positive 4. Okay, go ahead and give this one a shot. Okay, as in the uh, previous problem, I emphasized you want to get the absolute value expression alone. In this case, we have the absolute value of 2 minus x minus 3 equals 1. We want to get this alone on one side of the equation, so I need to add 3 to both sides to get him alone. Once I do that, now I can apply our little principle there. 
I set the expression equal to both 4 and negative 4. And I solve. Subtract 2 from both sides here. And notice that this is not alone. It's at a negative 1. I want to divide both sides by negative 1 to get my solution of x equals positive 6. Same here. I subtract 2 from both sides, divide both sides by a negative 1, and I get x equals negative 2. My solution set is 6 and negative 2. Uh, go ahead and give this one a shot. Okay, so here, um, let's look at this. It says the absolute value of something equals negative what? Negative 5. How can the absolute value of anything be negative? How can it be negative 5 units away? That's not a distance. So, in this case, what value of x can I find that would make this expression the absolute value of some number negative 5? Well, none exists. There is no value of x that can possibly ever make this a negative because absolute values are always positive.